It's time now. So let's play hockey. Hello, everybody. This is the debut Let's Play Hockey podcast. You know the brand. You've heard it at Excel Energy Center. What do we say? Say it with me. Let's play hockey. So we're we're doing our first podcast. We're going to figure out what this is. Right now, we know it's just a, a bunch of people that love hockey, and there's never been a more interesting time to talk about hockey in the state of hockey. We have Brian Zolman, the kingpin of Let's Play Hockey, here with us. And we have Brian Bonin, Hobie Baker winner, U of M. Um, won a face-off against Gretzky, maybe? Did you win it? Let's go with it. Okay, he thinks he won it. Uh, but we're, we got a Brian with an I, a Brian with a Y, and myself, John King, Pull Tab Sports. I'll be kind of moderating this discussion. So, Brian, tell us, uh, let's play hockey. How did you end up uh, with this brand? And I'm even curious, how does it, how do they do that at the Wild Games? Like, how did that work? Like, when hockey came back to Minnesota, did the previous guy – do a handshake deal, and they decided to shout it from the rafters every game? Or how did that tradition start? Well, it started back with Bob Utek, the original owner. He started Let's Play Hockey back in 1972, and he was the PA announcer for the North Stars, and that was his call, Let's Play Hockey. Well, it caught on um, and just kind of became, you know, the signature announcement before hockey games i think out east they say it's a great day for hockey and then in the midwest here we say let's play hockey um he started a newspaper publication and you know now 50 years later we're still going i took over in 2016 bought it from uh, doug johnson uh you know kind of got back into the hockey scene and uh yeah it's been fun it's good and you got the expo and you got the you can't sharpen your skates in the state of Minnesota without seeing a, a let's play hockey somewhere. Plus, you were in the Mighty Ducks. I think anything that's in the Mighty Ducks is probably safe for at least a hundred years. So, what do you want? Uh, you know, you were the one with the the itch to scratch on doing a podcast, and we're happy to help you here in the Cub Content Studio in Stillwater with Pull Tab. But what uh, what do you picture this being like? Is this like you're at a coffee shop in Minnesota? listening to people talk about the issues and topics of hockey or like give me a little snapshot what's in your head for what let's play hockey podcast could be well i think you know i mean there's so many podcasts out there right and you know we're a pretty pretty uh, big hockey brand it's like why aren't we doing a podcast we should be doing a podcast um you know and kind of take things off our pages that we write about that we put on our website and let's bring them up for discussion and have good conversation um, you know, we got a pretty wide ranging audience out there that I think, you know, they're all about hockey, especially this time of year during the season. So we're, you know, let's talk about what's going on around the state of hockey. And, and, uh, obviously having Brian Bond in here, he's, he's been a big, uh, big part of hockey in Minnesota for how many decades now, Brian? Too many. Uh, have you hit 50 yet? Are you 5 I, I hit 50. So let's go with 50. When is your birthday? Five decades. When's your birthday? November 28th. Happy birthday, buddy! Came and went. Um, Did you miss that, John? I turned fifty. I don't. Yeah. I like uh, her. Were you outside at a party in your yard? I was there. I think maybe. No, 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 no I made no, that up. Okay. <laughs> were we hot tubbing? Did we hot tub? So we got to introduce you, Brian Bond, and I'm sure people know. Uh, he was a runner-up uh, Squirt B um, hockey coach. Uh, I think that's one of your biggest achievements, right? You lost to uh, in the districts too. Another White Bear team. Um, also Hobie Baker winner at the U of M. Hockey dad. Uh, had three boys come through Hill Murray. One there now um, as a captain. And uh, obviously a college hockey stud. Had the NHL changed the rules like they did in 04, 05, um, you might even have a nicer house than you have right now, Mr. Bond. And so what's your uh, current uh, mind state on, on all things Minnesota hockey? Well, growing up in Minnesota – playing hockey you just love hockey and it's a great connection to let's play hockey because it was all about the rankings and uh, we'll get into that day uh, today a little bit yeah you got a lot of stuff to you're like busting at the seams on i got the pleasure of uh so my background uh weak ankled football player from edina sports editor for the yearbook um so i'm basically a sideshow attraction 
Um, I love the game. It's my favorite sport, but I, I play every Tuesday night at 950 um, at the Hippodrome. So, um, and I'll be kind of, uh, I think we'll figure out who is the moderator of this podcast and what the format looks like going forward. All right, now we're going to get a word from our sponsors. Uh, tell me about this Goon Guard Protect Your Chicklets. Looks like a picture of uh, Pat Maroon or um, maybe uh, Zach Bogosian on here. What's this mouth guard all about? Well, it's a uh, it's a great mouth guard. Um, form-fitting, microwavable. It fits very snug and very good. It really helps a player to protect their teeth. It's also, you know, mouth guards are worn a lot to protect from concussions as well, right? Because, you you know, um, the compression part of it. So, uh, and you breathe better, you know? So those last 15 seconds of your shift, you know, if you're wearing a goon guard, you might be faster than the, than the guy who's wearing a, a different mouth guard, right? You might have some a little extra in your lungs to get that little extra burst. Uh, it says great for braces too. So I know, you know, you'll probably have adult braces before long. And uh, where do you want people to go to go to? Are they supposed to go to this goonguard.com go or to, do they want to put a code in for Let's Play Hockey? Go to goonguard.com and uh, we will probably get a code up here soon, but go to goonguard.com. You can get them in team colors. They come in a two pack and they're very affordable. I think they're twenty four ninety nine for two. It comes with a ca uh, carrying case as well. Um, yeah. Recommended by Let's Play Hockey. Awesome. Goonguard, check them out. What we did today... I got a coach's board in front of me, a grease board. We, like all great things, we started it on a group text. Each of us submitted three topics to discuss. Maybe this thing's 45, maybe it's an hour today, and we'll work through some topics. Uh, Zolman, uh, you're the one with the brand. Uh, what's our first topic of the day? I'm, I'm giving you the conch, as they say in Lord of the Flies. Oh, boy. I don't think I've seen Lord of the Flies. Um you know, I think I think one of the big topics, you know, everyone's talking about is is Minnetonka. You know, how good are they? Is this the best team we've seen um, in the last, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 ever? Uh, you know, um, I think we've all seen them play. Yeah, I took a, a pilgrimage out to see them play. Um, well, why don't you start? What You, you kind of study this. you got photographers at games. You have to do rankings and such. What's your take on the Galacticos, uh, the super team from Minnetonka? Well, you know, I watched them play YZ in front of a sold-out uh, crowd. Just awesome atmosphere um, over the holiday break there. And obviously impressed, very impressed. But I can tell you, um, you know, ended in a 1-1 tie. And the one thing, I mean, the, the, the you know, ability that they have, you know, one through nine forwards, um, you know, their D uh, off the charts, off the charts. Um, what I didn't see was that, you know, that killer instinct, you know, they're in a close game and, and just, you know, let, just take over. It's like, guys, just take over. But, you know, credit to Wyzetta. I don't know if you guys have seen Wyzetta play, but very well coached. Again, a lot of depth there. You can't tell the difference much between their first line and their third line. Um, they defend well, uh, you know, but, you know, Minnetonka's top line, you know, could probably be skating for some college teams right now. You know they're that good, and their second line is is fantastic. Their third line is great. Um, they're going to be tough to beat, but can they be beat? I think I think they can. I think they can be beat. Um, <clears throat> a bounce here, a, you know, a bad call there. Uh, run into a hot goalie. They've had some close games and they've had some blowouts. I mean, they're out shooting teams, you know, sixty five to nine which is just crazy. Uh, you know, I haven't seen a team like this really since the Jefferson team back in the mid-'90s. And, Brian, I don't know. You know, you've seen a lot of hockey over the last 25 years, 30 years. You know, where do they rank as far as, you know, teams of the past? Let it out, Bonin. What do you think of the uh, the Galacticos? I do like this team. <laughs> they, they came at us last year, too much to handle, really both games. To the YZ comment, they've been too much to handle the last two years as well. I think to take a step back here and think about rankings and think about the why behind the rankings is has always been fun uh, in the state of Minnesota. I, I, I made that comment because as a child, Let's Play Hockey had the rankings, the only rankings, and you didn't even know what was behind it, but it mattered. And they were pretty good, those rankings. There's always a why behind it. And with Tonka, 
last year, I think there were some questions. This year, there's no question. They have to be the number one until somebody can beat them. I'm not sure they fall out of number one, even if they get beat. That's how good they are. But if you go back in time, I played on some really good teams at White Bear Lake. And it's always been fun to think back and wonder who was the best team. Why were they the best team? And some of this is still the exact same as it was. So I had to play against those Jefferson teams, and they were fantastic. But my senior year, I believe we were better. And we played them to a 2-2 tie over there at Jefferson, sold out crowd. I mean, that was fantastic. And we didn't know what we were necessarily up against in the future. You know, they went on to win three straight. They were really good. Lots of D1 players on there. Um, so this is, is interesting because I think we could probably go back 10 years before that, talk about some Grand Rapids teams, talk about some International Falls teams as we keep moving, you know, south, and it would be the same. You know, Rozo, way back, who, who did they lose to or not? Were they the best team? Uh, the Brottons, the Ericsons, the, I mean, they were fantastic. So I think that's where this is going to get fun is where are the chinks in the armor along the way? How did you stop the Brottons? How did you stop the Sheehys at International Falls? How did you stop the, the machine we had in White Bear Lake? And we tried to stop you. Yeah. I, and this will be great because you have an answer there. Mm -hmm. We played against each other and you would know yet a lot of times that those are the insides that the coaches have to know. Like if we're going to beat Minnetonka tonight, we got no risk. We're, we're the underdog. But I think we know how we could beat them. And last year in the state tournament, we almost beat them. Mm -hmm. And that, actually we should have in the sense that we had an opportunity to do that. And they panicked. So it, uh, well, I'll say panicked. We'll get into that later. But it makes it fun. Where do you think they rank you two? So uh, I'm calling them the Galacticos because it reminds me when Beckham and Figo and Ronaldo and all these guys came together on Real Madrid. I mean, they are a super team. Um, so basically on the outside looking in, so I, my kids are done playing hockey. This is what you hear someone like me, just a, a regular guy. You hear there's a super team in Minnetonka. I've heard they got 12 D1 players, 8 D1 players, 9 D1 players. And then the second thing you always hear is, and none of them are from Minnetonka. Now, whether that's true or not, that's literally what's being passed around like a note in high school. So I, I asked a little more, well, maybe there's a half a dozen that were in Chaska Chan. They were going to end up on the Chaska side of the tracks. They decided to split as a group, which is their prerogative, whatever. I'm never going to uh, talk bad about young kids, right? But, but that's the scuttlebutt, right? Super team, not homegrown um, Galacticos. But I... Are how good – everything changes. Skill level changes, right? The way people are playing in the NHL looks nothing like when, when Gretzky was playing. Um, is this top five high school team of all time, in your opinion? I mean, you've watched them play for a couple years. They won the state championship last year. They'd be favored to win it back-to-back -back again. Um, I'm just curious. you think this is a top five team all time, high school hockey? I think they have to win this year to be in that conversation. I think they're set to win. They're set up that way. Um, but, again, it's not. they might not even get out of their section. I mean, that's how good Class AA hockey is, especially in Section 2 and Section 6. Um, Wyzetta might not get through. And they're, I mean, they're unbelievable. I mean, they're really good. They didn't last year. Yeah. They, they, they were know. the top team coming out of, no. I mean, hands down. And Edina, because that's the uh, – that's what we haven't crossed yet, John. The we'll, Edina. We'll come to them. Hey, the I, I don't think Minnetonka wins, wins it, just to be clear. I think there's too much pressure. Um, it's one game, one hot goalie. It's almost like that show Dream State. It's like every team that ends up on Dream State, you know, or you're on the cover of the Madden or the EA Sports, right? Like, I, I just, I don't know. I, I think, I will say if they do, if they come back, they run it back, all the expectations in the world, every hockey parent with a magnifying glass watching them play, that's that's significant. That's where you do get into is winning it twice in a row in the present era, similar to three times in a row with Jefferson. Um, but you uh, you know you get there. I so what do you what do you think on 
you've seen a lot of teams and you've seen some different eras as well, just like Zolman. But what do you think on Tonka? Where do they rank? Yeah, I got to be careful. I don't know enough in the history of teams and and the back to back, the ability to go back to back. That's what's so impressive about Jefferson. And if you go back in the the annals of of high school hockey uh, here in Minnesota, there's some really good programs. So just the amount of pressure that Jefferson was on to win those three uh, titles in a row is tough to beat. Uh, Whether it was 50 years ago or 20 years ago or today. And you said one game. Um, It's actually six games. Those three sections and three in the tourney and even last year for how good Tonka was last year, if you look at the results of those games, it's not indicative of what you would actually think. They should have won 5 nothing all three games. So that should just tell you what you're up against. And now, yeah, with all the pressure, I don't know if Jefferson had that or not. So um, I think uh, that's what would be fun in this conversation. We'll go back in time and have those conversations. But they are feeling it because you're right about the rumors. The rumors are out, and there's all sorts of people that want to take them down socially, you know, on the, on the outside the rink and then inside the rink. Nothing to lose. So they're they're there, but it, it would be hard to put them up on that pedestal if they Until can't they win don't. a second one. When they, so the thing that was fun, so Zolman, I went and watched uh, Brian's kid plays for Hill Murray, and they played Minnetonka, the super team. And I did this thing that I would encourage others to do. So I don't have a, a horse in the race, right? So I, I'm, like a guy, I'm like the old guy that just goes and watches a random high school hockey game, um, which is a really good thing to be, by the way. It's less stressful. It's better to be a young guy going to watch high school hockey games. Yeah, but. true, true. But I, I get there, and I said, here's what I want to do. I think they have 10 D1 players or something. I said, don't even show me the – I don't want to see the score sheet. I'm just going to watch this game with my eyes, and I'm just going to tell you when I think a player is a D1 player. And it was like making microwave popcorn. You would just be like – I go, 15. And you go, yep. And then two minutes later, I'd be like, 21. Yep. And uh, I mean, they flash. Uh, The interesting thing about Tonka, this Galacticos deal, is they just don't, they just ram it down your throat. I've never seen a team that's like, yeah, deal with it. Deal with us. We are pedal to the metal. We don't care. You know, we're going to keep shoving food in your mouth until you throw up. I mean, I, I it was like, and I think that's p- potentially what makes them beatable. Because you said something at the game when we were there, which was interesting. You said, if this team makes a couple mistakes or a mistake, they're like the Russian army trying to figure out how to pull the goalie. Like, I, I even I looked at their goalie, who you don't even notice when you watch him play, and he seems kind of smaller, and I thought, man... You know, I don't know. There's a lot of competition out west. Um, we'll see. But it is something I would go take a look at. It. It's like you're going to the auto show looking at a concept car. I, I think it's worth making a trek to Minnetonka, see all the people standing on the railing, observing uh, the experiment. Um so, yeah, maybe, man, it's, uh, it's exciting. A, it's exciting for high school hockey. Hey, they all stayed at a high school, even if they didn't grow up there. So that's pretty cool, and uh, and it's fun to have a target. Well, they got a couple games versus Edina, maybe on the road, over at Braemar. That you, could be. Edina will do just fine. Oh, uh, here we go. <laughs> um, anything else on Tonka, either of you? I'm just moderating here. I, well, I'll echo what you said. You know, I think it is good for high school hockey to have a team like this. You know, I mean, do they have a target? on their back yeah and i think that's you know might not be good for them you can't Um, see it though because they're so far ahead of you yeah right (laughs) um i will say they are very very well coached um i think goldsworthy does a great job and i think that's why they are so good people want to play for him they really do um and you know if they win it's going to be fun to watch if they get beat it's going to be fun to watch you know and so it's it's great for high school hockey they're a great villain you know, that's what they are. They're a villain. I, I'm sorry, but it's – it's, and it makes a great movie. You need a cowboy in a black hat uh, to watch it. So we've gone through one topic, uh, but it was on two lists. So this podcast should be about six or seven hours. Um, Bonin, I know you got all this, like, angst and you got things you want to say. Why don't you pick our next topic? What's What's on your mind with the state of hockey in Minnesota? 
Well, here's what you wrote. You wrote online schooling and recruiting. So tell us what you mean by that or one of those. Yeah, let's go to recruiting. Okay. That's changed quite a bit in the last, well, I'm 50. And so I suppose let's go to age 14, Bantam Camp up at Duluth. And Mike Sertich, the head coach of the Bulldogs, is there. Because the camps on the Duluth campus. You're talking college recruiting, not high, all not, not high school well, I'm recruiting. Calling, I'm talking all recruiting. So we'll, we'll. I think this is going to cover high school, maybe even youth, but it's for sure high school okay. to juniors to NCAA and to the NHL, and that's recruiting for the draft, uh, is what I'll call it. Okay. And so if we go all the way back, um, I can remember that first time. You know, that's Mike Sertich. Everyone knew that was Mike Sertich, and. He's there. Hey, boys, how you doing? And you're like, well, this is fantastic. And I don't know, maybe it was a recruiting violation, but he's like, we'd love to have you playing for the dogs, you know. And you're in the practice rink and can walk through the tunnel, and there's the deck, and one of my favorite rinks of all time. And you're like, yeah, this is just really, really cool. Well, there were a lot of rules back then, you know, in terms of when you could sign, when the coaches could really talk to you, really start recruiting you. And we've had, kind of been on a roller coaster. We're back to... I'm not even sure the dates now of when you can start to recruit players, but there was a time about five years ago, I think it was, where kids were committing. I mean, the Lucia says, did they commit when they were peewees to yeah. the U? Bams for sure, yeah. It was it was crazy. Remember that photo? It was like uh, somebody with catching like two fish or it was, it caught another big one, and they were both like they were like seven and eight years old. Yes. <laughs> it got it just clowned on social media. People were like, hey, man, they can't oh. shave yet. Uh, but that maybe they they seems like they've gotten out of that a little bit. It got really young, kind of gross young, and it feels like it's gone up a little bit. You know, I think I, it's junior. You have to be a junior now. Junior high school. Yeah, okay. it's it's being driven, and um, but there's a lot of pressure, and the pressure still I think sits at those younger ages because you can see some of these players. There's so much going on in hockey now. You can find out some information about a great player. And Isaac Howard, for instance, yeah, who just did this well, I'm pretty sure on this fact, got cut from the JV at Hill Murray just a couple of years ago. Isaac Howard from Hudson, Wisconsin. I'm I'm pretty sure. So we'll have the to look this up. The giant bag of swag that just won the World Juniors, Michigan State, Tampa Bay Lightning, got cut from Hill Murray? As an eighth grader, I believe it is. So we're going we're gonna to back that up. So if you think about this, but what that story That's unbelievable. will tell people is, one, in eighth grade, you're a first-year Bantam. What are you doing playing JV? Isaac Howard, as an eighth grader, drove a Camaro to that tryout. He, I he promise you. He and he have. had a USA hockey belt buckle. How great is a that? white suit. But you have that. You know, you have the two Andersons. So what's your point here is that, that at, 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 the age that people are making decisions about kids is too young? That's what you're saying? It's They're thinking about it too young. Yeah. The recruiters and agents and those that are trying to help you through this process, because there's money to be made here and there's some professionals that can help you, but there's a lot of professionals with a lot of opinions. And as we talk about those players of ours leaving their associations, maybe leaving their area to play for a different school, you kind of touched on this with the rumor about Minnetonka and the Chaska Chan, and it's actually, it is happening. Um, in many it's all, areas. So you're almost transfer portal-like at the high school level. I mean, this has always I, happened. There's always been mailboxes. Yeah. I mean, uh, private schools have always had a, a unique advantage because they can take kids from wherever, and then there's always been some borderline you know, mailboxes and such, you know, East Dillon, West Dillon, Friday Night Lights, right? But yeah. I uh, – you think? do you think it's gotten more rampant where it's sort of like, hey, birthier, hey, we're all – uh, I don't even know what the birth year would be anymore. My son was an 01, but hey, we're all 01s. We're kind of looking at the board here. I think if we all go, uh, if we get six of us to go to Andover, uh, we could have a pretty good time in St. Paul for a couple years. You think it's that matter of fact? Like somebody's at a tournament, like the dream team, deciding when they get back to the NBA they want to play together? I think it is, and why not? I mean, why yeah. not? Because you just got to move. You just got to. Well, that's a big deal, moving. Or open enroll. You don't have to for, necessarily move to go to high school. Yeah. There's really no rules that prevent it. There's no sitting out a year, nothing like that. And we but see don't, doesn't your home have to be in the city you're playing for if it's not a private school? So, like, if I was living in Chaska, like supposedly these kids, and then 
I wanted to play for Minnetonka, I I have to move my house into Minnetonka, no? Not with the open enrollment rules, no. and I can't remember which school is which. You know, we know White Bear folks uh, going to Montemidae. You know, so like just knowing that, I don't know what the rules are. I think Hopkins, you know, you get Hopkins kids. If you play hockey, you're going to Tonka. If you play basketball and you live in Minnetonka, you're going to Hopkins. I think, you know, it's kind of not 100% on that, but, you know, that's kind of what I've heard through, through the grapevine. There's no penalty of with the open enrollment. What it has done, I think, it has, ha- has kind of leveled the playing field with the private schools, you know, because now kids can go anywhere. So, you know, a White Bear kid going to Hill or a Forest Lake kid going to Hill, they can just as easily, a Forest Lake kid could just as easily go to White Bear yeah. Lake and play, right? And I've seen that happen. It is happening, and it, uh, it, it, it's going to change the landscape a bit. But it leads more into the recruiting then of also this pressure on these kids to maybe then make that move, make it even earlier, then the pressure to move on and go to juniors, you know, where you got USHL teams with 45 guys on the roster, and they're churning through these guys, and they're pulling them out of our great state of Minnesota, um, sometimes I believe way too early, um, but they, they're being recruited on the side, they're being recruited to help that next level team and those people maybe move on there, there's a lot of pressure there that's that's pulling on this much less division one nhl hey the draft you need to do this this and this to get there and okay i better go do that because the lucius has did it yeah or the so there's this pressure to to move on which is what's so great about tonka at least these guys are are coming back we're, we still have some of that but but man this recruiting um, the the intensity of like I better make a choice here at age fourteen about someday at age twenty two playing with some men that's a pretty big choice and it just did not exist before and it keeps ramping right and I think it's always about next level right how am I going to get to the next level okay so when I'm a pee wee um, I want to play Division one hockey what's going to give me the best opportunity to play Division one hockey is it going to be to go to um, you know, stay in my association or should I go try to make Minnetonka's team or should I, you know, go to Hill or, or St. Thomas Academy or Benilde? Um, you know, what's going to, you know, and we see that in college hockey think as well is, you know, what's going to get me to the NHL, you know, juniors is a step to college as well. So it's always about next step. And, you know, a lot of people are going to make their choices on what's going to get them to that next level. And, you know, back when we played Brian, it was, we just wanted to play in the state tournament, right? You know, and if we were lucky enough and you were fortunate enough to, to play Division One hockey, um, the opportunities were there. And I don't know, you'd have to maybe explain the recruiting process back then. I wasn't good enough to get recruited to play college hockey. You know, I, I'm guessing it's just way more rampant nowadays than it was back in, you know, the mid-'90s. That's my guess. I, you would have it, a better idea on that. It's certainly different, and I wouldn't know the extent of today – what that rank is, you know, do I, do I get to the USHL as soon as possible to be as good as I possibly can in the USHL to get my draft rank for the NHL up? Am I actually looking for the best NCAA division one team where I can play a certain style under a certain coach, coaching staff out East? Do you stay West? And at least I would tell you in the old days, it was like, uh, I got a call from Michigan state sounds awesome let's just let's just do that i i don't know how many guys they got i kip miller's there he won the hobie he's fantastic like i'll play with him that that was a much simpler question to to answer and juniors wasn't even part of the equation right wasn't part of the you know it there wasn't that stepping stone you know it was basically you graduate and you go play college hockey if you weren't good enough to play college hockey then you you know you could go play juniors you could. Um, and I think what's missed along the lines here is in this recruiting and the pressure that's happening is this idea of get to that next level, not understanding how much of a jump the next level is. So, John, we're at that game, the Taka game. It's six rip. Um, could have been ten rip. Could have been four four because of how the ebbs and flow of, of, of the game happens. Take that up a, a notch. You've got to be ready for that at the USHL level. So one of my questions would be back to the players and stick around. You got to score three goals in that game. Dominate your level. You need to dominate 
on a regular basis. And Tonka is doing that. And Yen, they're winning 4-3. They're tying Wyzetta. They're, so it tells you how tough that is. You need to get yourself ready for that next level. The longer you can have some space and time in this game today, the longer you should maybe stay there and become a man because I'm telling you, it continues to just go. One question for you, Brian. Let's go back 30 years. USHL calls and says, hey, you know, take today's hockey landscape and let's bring it back 30 years. Would you have stayed or would you have played juniors your senior year? I think that's why I bring it up. I don't, I don't know because it, it didn't exist. And I think slowly what we've seen is just wait and you'll go. And you have to go to the USHL to get yourself prepared. There's only two players a year that are true freshmen to a, well, if I have to play two years, I better get in even early to make sure I can play those two years because there's so many good players. Um, so it, it, it's really difficult uh, on these kids to make those, those decisions, I think. The parents, again, they're now influenced way differently than our parents were influenced. My dad, I think, was like, hey, I think there's a guy interested in having you maybe play hockey in college. Like, well, that'd be cool. Yeah. Oh, no, okay. well, a lot of that's just information, right? I yeah. think NIL uh, is is attached to this. You see the player really has power now where, um, you know, Cole Iserman was going to play for Minnesota, top prospect um, from Massachusetts. He Commit or he verbally was coming to Minnesota back when we had Logan Cooley and Matthew Nyes and Faber. Those guys leave. He's got a family situation changes. You know he's not. You know he's going now to BU. Um, uh, you see a Nebraska quarterback just committed uh, to play their top five QB prospect to Nebraska, which is crazy. But he's he's previously committed to two other schools, right? So it's it's almost like. It's about right now, and it's about me. And um, so I, I actually I think the Tonka kids should be given some credit. I don't really care if there was a civil war in Chaskachan and they got on a bus and went to Minnetonka. i got to be honest, I don't really care. They're playing in the high school hockey. Um, it's a really great story. Um, they're very talented, and, and they got a target on their back, and I think it makes it more fun for everybody. You know, it's a, it's a hell of a story. And um, it's not unlike when, you know, Budish and Anders Lee and all these guys, they called themselves the brothers and they decided to stay in high school and played multiple sports in Edina. I mean, I think, you know, as long as you're, you're here, um, it's pretty cool. But your, your message, I think, to button what you said is don't be in such a hurry to get to the next level if you're not dominating the one you're at right now, right? Yeah, it's hard because you'll see players around you, past players, that are, and that's where I want to get. And um, if they have three goals and I have three goals, then I'm ready. And uh, so it's just continuing to push that. And I love this game. I don't want these players leaving. And uh, I think they'll look back and say these were the greatest years. I mean, this opportunity to do this, people casually throw that out there. Oh, these guys have an opportunity to repeat. That is something so unique and so cool i'd like everyone to be i want a chance to do that there's no way i would leave early and i have two more years if i want to go play junior well it is a different expectation right like you said most people just want to get to the state tournament and these guys they need to win it you know the expectation is to win it and anything less than that won't feel good at the end of the year so that's signing up for a little different program um we're back to the grease board here at zolman uh what do you you got three topics here we haven't dug into which would you like to talk about first well i think we talked a little bit about about uh you know leaving early with brian talking about that that's you know, the juniors the junior okay. you know leaving early for juniors one more um thing on that is you know these kids nowadays have so many people in their ear right you know these junior coaches and some of them even have advi they hire advisors and it's just it's different and you know for someone who's was fortunate enough to play in the state tournament. Brian, you played in the state tournament your sophomore uh, year. It's an experience that, you know, I'm 50 years old now, other than having kids and, and getting married, you know, it's right there, you know, and it's, uh, 
I just, it, I kind of cringe when, when kids leave early. I do. It's like, man, you're missing out. But then I get it. If, if, if they're, and this will lead into the next topic, if your program has no chance of getting to the state tournament, but you got a chance to play college hockey and going early and people are telling you, you got to go play juniors. I get it. I really do. I get it. And so let's go now to class double a parody, you know, really there's probably 10, 15 teams there that on any given night can, can beat each other. Right. And Brian, I don't know if you agree on that, but um, then again, there's a, there's a whole host of teams out there that really don't have a shot at getting through sections. You know, do we need a third class? Boy, we didn't even want a second class back in the day. A lot of people didn't, but, um, but I will say that, you know, the top programs in double a are so good. Um, well, we just, you know, you guys fell the 18th or Hill fell the 18th in the rankings. St. Thomas, what? St. Thomas jumped up to four. Well, then Hill goes and beats St. Thomas, you know, five to two. Um, you know, so it's, I mean, the, uh, the parody one through 15, one through 20, even, uh, the hockey's just, it's phenomenal. So you're saying high school hockey's almost turning into college football where there's like a, a, a special class of, um. 10 to 15 teams that are just a tier above. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's kind of, and at any given night, those teams, it's a coin toss who beats each other, but then there's just a whole bunch of other teams without a real chance. Yeah. I mean, but you look at Minnetonka and how good they are, and we can't, we can't sit here and say, well, they're going to win easy. You know, they're going to, they might not get through their section. I mean, that's how good double A hockey is. But there again, there's two, three teams each section, five, six, seven, eight. Really, no chance. I hate to say it, but there, you know, it's just it's reality of the situation. Um, and you can go back to association hockey. What associations are really building um, that feeder program? And are the feeder programs? Edina, I think, is is they don't need to go outside the association and bring people in because I mean they could probably have three high school teams that would be in the top twenty. You know, um, but is there? Um, you know, are these teams on the outside looking in? Is the door open enough for them to sneak sneak in? I don't know. You know, you got your ten to fifteen programs there that are there. Who are the, every who are year. the big boys? Who are the? You think of Tonka being kind of the special treat. Who are the other teams you put on one or two hands that are that got some some sharp teeth? Well, I think Maple Grove. I think Andover, Hill Murray, obviously Benilde. Uh, St. Thomas Academy, you know, Wyzetta. year in and year out, Wyzetta, Minnetonka. Edina. Edina, obviously. Um, so that's almost 10 right there. Yep. And, uh, Holy know. Family got into a, a little spicy one, it looked like, with Edina the other day. Um, Rogers so, is a program that's kind of a kind of a Maple Grove type situation, I think, where, Maple, the, you know, the community just grew and the hockey kind of grew with it. Maple Grove became kind of a powerhouse in youth hockey and now high school. I think Rogers is on their way to that as well. Um, yeah, I think there's a dozen teams there that have a legit, and legit it's chance. Heavy on the west side, so be interesting to see here in the next five, ten years because recruiting, like real recruiting, will be happening public and private. But certainly at the private, you're you're selling, you know, a full package and a different package to to folks. And in hockey, you might also be selling ice time. You know, there's only so many, there's only so many minutes uh, for the Edina Youth Association, the Wyzetta Youth Association, the Tonka Youth Association, the Eden Prairie, big numbers. So, um, I love hockey. I'd like to play. There might be an opportunity at Penild, Holy Family. You know, does Providence move that direction? Do we start to see some of that just because of the opportunity? Um, but on that west side, there's. There's powerhouses, and each year I'd say what makes the difference is when Wyzetta this year can compete with Atanka because they have three lines. Depth is key. You gotta talked about that at the youth, youth associations level forever. Build as many players as possible because in the end, if you're playing with the big boys, you gotta have depth. Isn't that funny too? Because everything's geared towards individuality, right? The celebrating and skating away from your teammates to do some skit, right? But even when my daughter was playing, I remember the teams that would always smoke us, I couldn't tell who was who. Like, we would play Moundsview, and they would have this deep girls team, and 
I didn't know which line was which. I didn't know who was the star player and who wasn't. They all looked the same. I was like, this looks like they have like 20 players that are exactly the same skill level. They're all like a nice solid 8.5 and you would just lose because even if you had one line that was studs and a couple people you're trying to hide, you just couldn't beat them. And so ironically, if you want to be a winning team and, you know, win together, walk together forever, it's, it's really about depth and it takes everyone. It's not just, um, you know, ultimately, I don't know how many D1 players Tonka has, but it's going to come down probably to those other kids who aren't D1 players that are going to have to, you know, be the difference in those games to get them all the way. Um, did, uh, what are you, any final thoughts on double uh, A parody or what you see from a kind of tiering of high school hockey? Well, I'd like to go with the potential of a third tier because it's about opportunity, and I was not an, a proponent of two classes way back. I'm still kind of frustrated with that. Not sure why when we're looking for opportunity. Uh, you know, the state tournament was really unique, so I think, you know, that history. and But at this point, seeing and maybe having the ability to do some sort of pairwise that you literally throw everybody into the uh, into the soup, and you go top, you know, thirty two or sixty four, and then the next and the next. Um, no more big school, little school. Just we're gonna who you played, what the results were, and then we throw the because that was what the intention was in my mind. So you would say, so everybody's playing a schedule. You've got some sort of strength of schedule factor, and then you tier the tournament based on in-season performance so if you got a you know red wing plays a bunch of gets a bunch of big non-conference wins they're going to play in the triple a bracket or something is that what you're saying yeah you'd have to play up and um uh be, just for the if, as we continue to that's carry, almost like seeding that would almost be that would yeah. have to be very either you got to spend a lot of money on a computer program or it's more like the um NCAA football, you get 20 people in a smoke-filled room to figure out who goes where. Strength college hockey does that, too. They do that. That's why I say the pairwise, because college hockey has yeah, done it. they and, sit in a room. And maybe and, it's just 32 teams, but, uh, you know, what's the intention? What, what are we looking for? I mean, Brian brought up this, some teams have no chance. Well, if that's really the case, do we want those teams playing each other because of school size? I mean, that seems quite random in today's day and age. You want to see the best teams playing each other. And there's still the ability with the parity. Uh, we haven't gotten to this yet. Just some of the scores I've seen in the last eight years, much less these last three years. There's some big upsets or some really close games on a, on a nightly basis where you look and see Tonka wins 10 nothing, and then they win 4-3. Mm -hmm. You see... Uh, Hill Murray, we lose to an unranked team and then beat a really good team. Like So if you push those top 32, everyone's got a chance, but you're playing with the big boys, and we don't have any of this continued, even at maybe the single A, where you're having really good teams, crushing teams. Um, but I don't know, because you can't really fix it. I think school size, as we continue to see players moving around and making choices at the youth level and the high school level, um, hey, are we all trying to win? Yes. Then chips fall where they may. I mean, it, I think it would be really exciting uh, to see something like that happen, but not charge. Yeah, you'd really have to spend some time like college hockey does kind of. I mean, they, they're they so thoughtful on everything. Well, we can't send, you know, if Minnesota's a higher seed, we can't send them to Grand Forks because that's the whole mice advantage for you know, the fighting Hawks. And I mean, it's very manual. It's very like, and it, once you move one person, it messes up five other pieces and you really got to sit in a room with a group of people to do it. That's interesting. I, High so school I, football, yep. I think, does something like this. It's just, so it's possible. It seems possible. Yep. Well, they've gone to seven classes, basically, in high school football. You know, so, wow. you know, I mean, that's a lot. You know, but you look at hockey and I think back when we played, you know, we, we like the one tier, right? It's like you, you get there and, you know, the Rose or the War Road coming down trying to beat, you know, a Hill Murray or, or a Edina. Um, that's what everybody wanted to see, right? 
now we're parents and we got kids, you know, and my kid played in a small association and we had no chance, no chance. It's like, well, if we had, if there's another class, maybe, you know, maybe they'd win a playoff game or get to a section semifinal or even a section final, you know? So I think our, the way we look at it changes once we have kids and, you know, we, we get older and, and things. I don't know if a third class would be good for high school hockey or not. I really don't. I think it would have to, I think maybe a different weekend in a different venue, you know, maybe mm-hmm. St. Cloud or even Duluth or something like that. But it's know. intriguing. I So let's go to the core of it. Okay. So um, we've been working with Minnesota hockey for a few years, just helping them with some marketing stuff. And, and there was this, I actually got in this debate with Ryan Carter a couple of years ago and, and he was kind of saying, it's interesting that Minnesota hasn't really produced um, that high, high end talent for the NHL, right? If you look at Austin, Mal- Austin Matthews comes out of a sidewalk crack in Arizona and scores 50 goals a year. You got, whether it's Jack Eichel from Massachusetts, um, you know, Patty Kane, uh, you know, all these guys really, um, you know, they're the Hughes brothers, right? They're, none of them are from Minnesota. You know, Jake Gensel uh, is probably, you know, our, our strongest. You know, obviously Blake Wheeler's had a nice career. Brock Faber's doing exciting things as a young player. But we just don't have a lot of NHL store guys. Um, Kachuk brothers, all, I mean, all these people are not from Minnesota. And we're like the king of youth hockey. And so we would kind of talk about it and – his philosophy was, to paraphrase him, was that um, those other places where people are playing, it's just harder. You know, it's comfortable in Minnesota, right? You you go to the rink five minutes away. You you know, you eat at the restaurant attached to the rink. You go home and, you know, mom pot taps you on the head and you go to bed in your own bed. And, you know, and these other people are like – you're in St. Louis flying to Detroit to play Little Caesars or whatever. And so you're going to get, because of that extreme um, commitment, you get maybe a little higher level. But when I stepped back, um, I really started to take pride in making the most hockey players. Okay, So this was kind of a shift in my head when we were doing some strategy work with Minnesota Hockey was – it isn't really about the best. It's about the most. So the even the tagline we did for them, um, we make hockey players, right? And I really think it's all about broadening the base. I think it's um it's and that's why this tier this multi tier thing is potentially interesting. I don't I don't really know, but I do like the idea that the most players playing and the most players in the NHL from the U.S., the number one state is Minnesota, right? That's that's a really – and eventually the Austin Matthews is certainly going to be a Minnesotan, I believe. But um, I just – I kind of think that's what it's about is, is how do you keep uh, – I do want to keep the best players here too because I think that's profile. In today's day and age, if every good player is leaving the state, um, say you did four tiers – and everybody ended up thinking it was a terrible idea and all the good players left and the whole thing went to, to shit. I mean, that would be a major problem. But but I kind of think when you think about important decisions, how do you keep more players playing longer? You know, is that a Pollyanna thing or is, what do you make of that idea? Well, I think, I mean, I agree with you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, you know, quantity is, is certainly... Um, you know, good, right? You know, to churn out as many players as we do. Yeah, we don't, maybe it don't have the next, you know, McDavid or Gretzky coming up through the ranks. Um, but there's an old saying, you know, kids on cold ice stay out of hot water. So there's more to hockey than just, um, you know, being the best player to come out of your association or being, even being the best player on your team. You know, so many kids come up through these programs and they don't even sniff high school hockey. You know, but hockey changes their lives for the better, I think. And, you know, that's the focus of community-based hockey. Let's make it affordable. Let's make it, uh, you know, something that kids can enjoy and have fun and, and 
you know, if they don't play high school hockey or, or college hockey, well, you know what, maybe they're skating Wednesday nights, you know, with their buddies, you know, when they're 25 years old. Uh, you know, as a sport, at its core, hockey should be fun. And I think, if, you know, for me, I, I loved it. I mean, I, I loved it. And how could you not? I mean, it's, it's so fun to play, you know, and too bad you had bad ankles. But, you know. All conference um, honorable mention football, one-year letterman. <laughs> um, but uh, do you think – why do you think we don't have a McDavid? So we're basically the most southern province of Canada, right? I mean, Minnesota on paper looks exactly the same as Canada. Why don't we have a McDavid? Why don't we have a, you know, even a Jack Hughes? You know, why why is Jake Gensel arguably the – you know, the best NHLer we've turned out in 30 years. I mean, is that, are we soft? Yeah, that's a little scuttlebutt in national hockey circles is Minnesota kids are soft. You know, they want to, they don't want to leave their binky in, in Minnesota. And, you well, know. you look at, uh, you know, the Hall of Fame. They just had an induction. And Jamie Langenbrunner was inducted. Yeah. Um, very good NHL player. Was he a great NHL player? No, but, you know, he's a, a great leader. You know, won a couple cups. Uh, captain the team USA um, was he flashy McDavid Austin Matthews scoring a ton of goals no but um, you know it, it's a good question I really don't you know Canada obviously is a hockey hotbed now you know back in the 90s 80s and 90s we didn't have all the Russians and Europeans coming over to play in the NHL either so the opportunities for Minnesota kids to get to the NHL has gotten a lot smaller with the European Europeans coming over here and, and filling up NHL rosters. So, um, but, you know, I think that the day's coming. Who, who's that player going to be? Um, you know, that's, a, that's what's great about hockey is every eight-year-old can think he's going to be that guy, you know, and that's what's fun about playing hockey. And, you know. What do you think? Why, why aren't we uh, – how in the hell can Austin Matthews come out of Arizona and be the freak show Pablo Escobar that he is? And we haven't, we haven't turned – I don't think Minnesota has a single guy in the NHL store. If each team has one jersey being hung of their best player, there's not a Minnesotan on there. There's probably 10 U.S. states represented, whether it's Jack Eichel, uh, Jack Hughes, um, Brock Besser. You know, I, oh, Besser, there we go. I guess I just fooled myself there. But what, what do you think? Why don't we get more? I think it's very hard to be that top, top end there are very, very few. So if we had one or two or three, does that satisfy the question? I, I pose that because I also would say the most. Let's make hockey players. Oh, I, that's what. That's definitely what turns me on. I, yeah. I think that is the job of Minnesota hockey. But um, it still seems like with quantity, what do they say, coal makes diamonds? So if you got the most coal in your bucket, you should have the shiniest diamond. But I would also say there's a little bit maybe of this softness. I mean, Canada has just been able to produce fearless hockey players. And there's something to that. You put enough people in the pressure cooker, and some are going to pop out of there. And we certainly do not have that in Minnesota to the same extent of, of Canada. What, are they just see. a little more redneck, or what do you think? Just a little more. Well, I think they're willing to send their kid off at 13 years old to go live with some random family to 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 <laughs> grab an axe and and start know. chopping wood. And there's there's pressure there. If you look at, if you'd say superstars, Sweden, Finland, you know Russia. Uh, I say Sweden, uh, Sweden, and Finland because they're smaller countries. How are they producing some players with such small numbers? You know what what's going on? If you really back it up to say, could or would Minnesota want to do this, is it even possible? I would say it actually is. But you are going to get really hyper-focused. Yeah, you would do a USNDTP for Minnesota, basically. <laughs> you, would. you would create Team Minnesota. You'd They'd, create four teams yeah, or and eight it would, teams. It would and you ruin. would continue to throw people into that, and you'd pop out a couple. But you would, uh, you would need to surround them at all times and train like the U.S. program to, to pop them out of there because that's kind of what it requires. We have the numbers, um, but along the way, do you get one, two, three, 
superstars because they're so hard to create. Uh, Snuggerud can shoot it. Maybe he'll uh, maybe he'll change the table. I don't know that it matters. It's just yeah, a it's provocative question. The Let's Play Hockey podcast is sponsored by Duke Cannon. Duke Cannon, if your hair is a weapon or you wish it was, there's no better grooming products for men than Duke Cannon. Pick up Serious Flow. Pick up Hurricane Hold Pomade. You can find them at Target. You can find them at Walmart. They're even in your hardware store. Duke Cannon, work harder, smell better. I, I know you wanted to talk about, you wanted to give a rebuttal to the Edina content uh, we put out yesterday, but I just want to tell you my, so this, Minnesota Hockey had us do these profiles of um, associations that they think are doing it right at the youth level. So Minnesota Hockey is not in charge of high school hockey. Uh, we did Edina, Grand Rapids. We got a couple more uh, coming after that. And what I learned, so I'm basically a reporter, right? I go out there and they set up all these builders and ex-players and president of the board, mayor of Grand Rapids, and we interview them. And um, what I really learned is it's about numbers. Um, a lot of the success is like bring a friend to play hockey at U8, you know, put a flyer in a bag for mites, right? It's, it's how do you get the bottom of the pyramid to be as big as humanly possible? Obviously, Dinah has gigantic numbers, but even Grand Rapids is a small town with, with a ton of hockey players. And, and then... You know, we talked about the money thing briefly this morning. It's really about facilities. So Braemar passing a $45 million referendum, okay? Uh, Grand Rapids getting $15 million for Yanmar Arena. You have to do that. You're almost like a college, right? You're, so the youth association, whether you're Edina, Minnetonka, White Bear, I, I, White Bear, it's very relevant for us, right? Like they're going to have to do some things – you know, they should somehow have three sheets out in Hugo and an outdoor thing. And if you want to continue to be successful, you have to go to the polls. You have to pass these referendums. I mean, the Excel is probably going to be asking for more money to update themselves eventually. It's, it's, it's a constant investment. It's about the most players playing the game at the youngest age and getting those things passed at the polls to get the dough. Um, but there's such a contrast. I mean, Edina's like all these people that move there for hockey. Grand Rapids, they can't even specialize in the sport because if they did that, they would only have one sport. So they, and they play outside and practice outside on the regular. And so they, their teams historically get better by March because they, they've been on the ice longer than some of the Metro kids. So I just think it's really interesting that the model it isn't just puffy coats and hanging over the railing at Minnetonka. You can be a, a Grand Rapids um, and where it's just a bunch of high IQ hockey people sitting up there uh, and a bunch of boys that want to play with their brothers and girls that want to play with their sisters. So what was your rebuttal? You, you think it really is just about financials? You got dough, you're going to be good at hockey? It really helps. You just said it about White Bear Lake. We, we have several arenas. We're going to need more if we want to continue it because the game has so just shot out of a cannon here the last couple of years, I think. So you might have a program like Hermantown just all of a sudden comes on the map and they, you want to keep that going. You need ice time. So to your like referendums, rinks, you need ice time. And that helps the recruiting because... As you get you on the skate. ice more, yeah. you do more. You see more accomplishment. So Edina, if you look at that, I mean, another rink, wow. They, they are going to be able to continue to just win games because they're getting more ice time. And that's a bit to the all-around athlete, too. If you're playing multiple sports in high school, it's going to be hard to be ready to go with these Tonka boys who are just cranking out hockey and more and more reps. It's just needed. So... Edina is able to do that, stay in front of that. It will be interesting to see how some of the smaller communities, can they keep up with, with numbers? Because you need that ice time to continue to compete. And the winning helps bring in more players. And so when I say just the, uh, you know, the 
money to that. It's more about ice time. And then I really like you got to have people with hockey minds because the game well, that's is also the, um, kind of work. That's the common pattern in these associations yep. that they're profiling. It's like, you know, I coached a little bit in White Bear Lake. I sure as hell wouldn't be near a bench in Edina. Uh, I mean, just with the, the credentials on these guys that are – they're all coming back. They're ex-pros, ex-college, um, ex-college women. A lot of women coming back, return to the hive, they call it. Um, the interesting thing is like Grand Rapids, okay? So the first time they put the referendum out there, it didn't pass. And, you know, it. but it's, it's, it's like you, unlike, so we just built a big new high school in White Bear. I don't know if the education system is going to get better because we spent $300 million on high school. I don't know. But the thing about ice, <laughs> you put you put six sheets somewhere, you're going to get better at hockey because it's like uh, there's unless they sit empty. Um, so it, it, what an investment if you can figure it out. Um, and it is a, it's a rat race, you know, and you, and you really have to lobby – you know, they were saying Grand Rapids, these people are really conservative about, you know, taxation and they do love hockey, but they're like, yeah, man, you know, keep your hand out of my, off my wallet. But they did it, you know, they worked it. And um, so it's, it's a constant effort. Um, I wanted to, you have anything, you had online schooling and you had high school hockey landscape, a couple notes on those and we'll get close to wrapping up here. Just let me make one point on the last conversation there, I think. Yeah. One thing you can't overlook is leadership within the association. Um, you talk about Edina and having all these ex ex pros, ex college people. Um, I think leadership is is huge. Good coaching is huge in determining success of a of a program. There's also that catch twenty two, right? It's like okay, we need a feeder program to have a good high school team, but we need a good high school team to get more kids excited to have that feeder program what comes first kind of chicken egg type deal, right? Edina has both, you know, there's a handful of associations that are just so full of good, young, enthusiastic hockey players. And then there's some, so you look at Burnsville back when we, you know, they, their youth hockey, their high school hockey, um, you know, I mean, they, they were, they were great back in the day. How and, about the Bloomington schools? And the Bloomington schools. All the Bloomington yeah. schools, those great players are all coaching in other associations benefiting them because it, it's so key and you know john we laugh because we coach together first you beat me as a coach we did district champs yeah that's uh that's well man we should talk about that yeah, then that's a, we coached that's a whole then we coached together and you were actually a huge distraction we were actually <laughs> trying to coach hockey and you were having so much fun yeah. i think thinking yeah. about pull tap sports i think all along you've been yeah. thinking about that uh but if you think about the coaching piece it is so valuable it's everything my dad was our, my coach through Pee Wee's. Our assistant coach, Chuck Warden. Great name. We picked this guy up. I don't know if Chuck knew anything about hockey. The Warden? The, the Warden. He ran the D. Uh, but you would open the door and let the pond hockey players play indoor hockey. And even through high school versus moving up to college, when I look at that versus what I see today, the amount of coaching that has continued because it must. If you want to win man, do you have to coach and you got to coach skill. So you just need really good coaches. So you got ice time, you need players and you need lots of good coaches because if I was going to be a high school coach, um, even a Bantam coach, if you really want to compete, I need a guy running the forwards and a guy running the D and I can oversee it all. Or maybe I just coach the, the forwards. You can't coach the whole bench the way the game's going right now. Teams are too good, so you got to be paying attention to so many things, and you need the right guy or gal saying the right thing at the right time if you're playing Edina and Tonka and White Bear Lake. And so if you look even on the east side, why White Bear, why have we stayed good in a pretty small community, 25,000 people, uh, versus Forest Lake, you know, versus a Mountains View? You know, what, what is, well, White Bear has a lot of great hockey minds that have continued to stick around and you can make things happen with that, but you got to keep it. And you got to, all we're ever talking about is ice time and white bear. We need more ice time. We need more ice time. So, well, that's the thing. It's interesting to see in Grand Rapids and seeing Edina. Um, white bear needs its cathedral. You know, they, they really, I, I mean, Vadness is, you know, two sheets, restaurant attached. That's pretty interesting. But um, at some point, you're going to really need to, 
make something kind of gross. <laughs> you know, probably in Hugo where it's like, what is this? Well, this is called Hockey World LLC. Um, and there's, you know, 100 pickleball courts and 10 sheets of ice. I mean, you're going to have to pump it up if you want to uh, stay on top. The, the thing I like just to kind of close the loop on this, the one thing I've learned through this research on these associations is if you had a handful of coaches, you could go into damn near any community, and if you've had 30 kids that signed up to play hockey, okay, um, and you made it fun for them and you coached them up along the way, um, I don't care if you're in Starbuck, Minnesota, or you're in uh, – if you got 30 kids in hockey minds and you got ice time, it's a Disney movie. I mean, you can – well, we we would take that team. You could as make a it. contender in high school. Yeah, you, you could, give us eight, ten years, yeah. guaranteed. That's what's so cool about hockey is you guaranteed. could go into Maplewood. You could take maybe people with different backgrounds that you know you get. I don't know. You get uh, you know twenty kids that you wouldn't think would be hockey players, and you teach them how to play hockey. I mean, it it really comes down to that: is do they still love the game? Do they want to play? Do you have ice time? And do you have good coaches? Um, and can you keep them? Because it gets harder. You know, you build that team and then they're 12-year-olds and somebody's in their ear saying, I know that Brian, they did that cool thing in your town, but, like, aren't you tired of hearing his voice? Why don't you come over here? We'll make you better. But um, it's still a magical game and, and needs to be protected. The Let's Play Hockey podcast is Sponsored by the Yoakum Real Estate Group. It's almost getting up on Super Bowl Sunday, and that is a trigger point in the state of Minnesota. If you're going to buy or sell a house, it's time to get it on the market by Super Bowl Sunday as the seasons change and everybody's doing their buying and selling of houses. And if you want to work with the best, go to Sarah and Jody, two twin sisters, five foot two blonde twin sisters. Uh, it's it's like having a, a full court press on all your real estate needs. Uh, think twice when it comes to your real estate uh, and leave it to the experts at Yoakum Real Estate Group. Check them out. Good luck. Do you have anything online online schooling, high school hockey landscape? Have we covered that or not? The schooling, I'm just going to touch yeah, real quickly. What's your thing on this? Yeah. This the ability to do that versus the experience of playing high school hockey, um, going to school with your friends, uh, you know, at that age, this is still an age that you're becoming an adult. You're not an adult yet. Those are just special years that teach you so many things about life, teach you things like, um, hey, I have, a, I have a gift here. I have great opportunity. I'm representing this school and my friends. And there's nothing like having your buddies in the stands. And what you learn than when you're at a football game sporting your buddies. Like, hey, that's their sport. They're committed to this. And uh, so that that is a big piece of this puzzle that I think continues to allow Minnesota to make great players. And you're saying if online schooling becomes more prevalent, you're just going to lose the magic. You could. If you're allowed to be recruited and told to sleep in till 9— do an hour of school, covers your whole day, easily. Get off to training, do a second training, go to high school practice. You're going to be good. You're going to get better. I don't know if you're going to continue to get better, but you will see something happen there. I, I worry about that. I worry about that. Um, How prevalent is this now, online schooling? Do you know, Zolman? I don't. I don't. But, I, you know, to echo Brian's point, you know, again, you know, now we're parents and everything, you know, to have that high school experience, I think, is something that you certainly want for kids. Um, it just helps them become better adults. And let's face it, not every kid's going to college, not every kid's going to play in the NHL. Sooner or later, that kid's, someone's going to tell them, you're not good enough. Um, you're ho you're done. Your hockey career's over. Are we doing the right things leading up to that moment where they can handle that? Yeah, and you, you know. what have you what have you been doing the last ten years? Well, I've been uh, playing hockey and sitting in my basement, not talking to anyone. Right? Yeah, that that's probably. I, I hear your point because um, we're still producing players. Yeah, the Casey Middlestads, the Brock Bessers, the Fabers. The we are making hockey players here. Yeah, who will someday be back in that community 
or a community. And you need them to be well-rounded. That's your point. you got to learn life skills, that they not just too. hockey skills. Yeah, because if we even shrink that back to let's go to Starbucks and grab 30 players, we're not only making them into hockey players. And if we have 60 players, we'll be even a better chance to stay better. So we want more people playing this game for more reasons. And then we'll still we'll have a cream of the crop. We'll, we'll have some players. I don't know how we get that popcorn that you're speaking about. Well, it's funny, uh, Faber had a great line. We interviewed him on the Wild Podcast, and he was just kind of talking about kids today and how it's all about social media and, and you know, your celly. And um, and he just he was kind of like, just, just don't be an asshole was kind of his message. And I think what happens in your model you're talking about. So if you're waking up at 9, you have a cup of coffee, you, you tick the school box, there's no one around you challenging you or bringing new information you're not learning anything besides hockey on a daily basis it's pretty easy to just have people pump your tires your whole life and you just become this little monster you know you see it on some of these you know there's some college hockey players there's some national team players that are just all they've ever had in their whole life is somebody pumping their tires and they're just they're little they're just bad people you know so I think that's a fair point you know how do you how do you take in the entire high school experience it's not just high school hockey it's it's that that high school you know it's it's the prom and the the homecoming and going to the football game as a hockey player and having your buddies at your game um, I, I think that's a great point well I think to most problems you know we can blame schools we can bl- blame teachers we can blame coaches most problems with kids don't extend beyond the front door of their own home if you build a culture within your household that, you know, high school is important, school is important, hockey is a part of your life, it is not your entire mm-hmm. existence. Because someday you're going to have to get a real job, you know. Um, hockey is going to teach you a lot of things, but, you know, it's not going to take you to 62 years old for 99% of the people, you know. Um, so I think it starts with, with parenting. And we see it, I think, um, you know, they – you know, they want their kid to be the best. They want him to play D1. They want him to go to the NHL. And they pump the tires, like you say. And then when that doesn't happen, what happens to that tire? It becomes deflated, right? And you got a deflated kid there that doesn't know what to do now. And we see it even... And he's at, got no life skills. And then we see it even after guys retire from the NHL, they kind of run into some issues because they're so used... I mean, that's their family. I mean, imagine some of these kids have been doing it since they were you know, on the road since they were 14 years old and now they're 35 and you're done. Well, that's when they run in, you know, they got nowhere to go. You know, they're used to being at the rink every day, you know, so having that foundation there um, to be a hockey player, but not just be a hockey player. Awesome. We're going to finish P-Dub two minutes. We're almost done here, folks. The, uh, I went to a PWHL, the home opener along with 13,000 other Minnesota hockey fans. And, um, it was really cool. Uh, now, I don't know what they did uh, a couple nights ago, probably 5,000. I don't know. Maybe they did 8,000. But um, it's a uh, it's pretty interesting product. I encourage you to check it out. You know, the women have come so far. I remember taking my daughter to watch Chrissy Wendell play at the Coliseum, you know, and she was just – no one could even get the puck from her. She was just this – completely an alien playing with girls right and now they're they're just all so good um this heisey had a goal the other night that would be kind of sports center quality you know um so to watch you know i remember all the hockey dads whenever they wanted to break a tie between watching their son or their daughter they would say well it's not like they're going to play in the nhl you know talking about the girls right of course the boys probably aren't either but you know you, you got the dream um but now you got, you know, half a dozen of these people making 80 grand or more, you know, uh, some of them are making only, you know, 30, but the average salary is about 55 grand. Um, it'll only grow, especially if the numbers, but, uh, and the other thing I would tell you that you guys will like is, um, they're letting hitting go on the boards, which is super weird that they might change it. But so the, I've talked to some of the players and they said they, they don't really know exactly how the how the rules work but they know that they want a more physical style of hockey because it'll it'll market better so you can't smoke somebody open ice style like scott stevens but you can basically 
full on body check someone on the boards. And when it happens, it's a bit like high school hockey where part of the beauty of high school hockey is there's mistakes and kids have their heads down and there's some disparity between, I mean, people can get smoked in these (laughs) girls hockey games and, uh, it's just a fun atmosphere. Um, you know, at the time of recording this, they had not lost a game. But what are you hearing on the PWHL? Any interest? Do you think it's cool? Um, you have any questions for me? I, I just want to give them a shout out because uh, I think it's uh, it's pretty cool. It's embarrassing it took this long. To have, have they adopted the P Dub? I'm getting uh, I'm getting some pretty good feedback. Uh, right. Yeah, we did talk to Zumwinkle and Heisey, and they were like, "Yeah, yeah, that." Uh, we it's can got do some legs there. Okay, they like it because I think the WNBA is is referred to as the dub, kind of in the the women's hockey circles because they're the OG of sort of figuring out a league a long time ago. So the P Dub seems to work for the ladies. Yep. Yeah. Well, we've seen, you know, um, I think it's evolved. You know, we had the NWHL. There's been some other attempts yep. to to make PHL, this yeah. make this go, um, and this seems to have a, just for whatever reason a, just a little bit like better recipe you know it's almost like that you know making that chili and but now now we got it you know, nhl now, rinks it's on bally's um i don't know i it's really different it feels different right Cause it does it's it does. been a it's like been trying to start for so long and god bless winnie brote for having the white caps for a decade but but now it's like it's prime time is it sustainable that's the question right? yeah i don't know the answer to that either and we're very early in into the game obviously the crowds have been great and that's what they need, I think, to be sustainable. Because even if someone with deep pockets is is uh, funding it, well, those pockets don't always stay deep, right? Um, hey, let's get this started. But it, they ha- there has to be fan support. Um, they got to sell a lot of merch. You know, they got to sell a lot of tickets. I think at the end of the day, that's the goal. But I think there's this misconception out there that, well, it's women's hockey. It's just not as good. The people that say that I don't think have really watched – the quality of women's hockey nowadays. It is it has gotten so much better. You talk about that Heisey goal the other night. Um it's just phenomenal. I mean fun to watch. She's I mean, fast. Yeah. Um, and and uh with the hit you know, bringing a little bit of the hitting in I think is a good thing. Um you know, and it's it's a good product. I mean anytime you're gonna sell anything, it's gotta be a good product, right? And I think they have that. So I think I think the sustainability is um, something that that could come to fruition. I well, really hope it does. In a world of woke, everything's woke. Every brand's got to be woke. I don't know how in the hell they don't get a bunch of sponsorship money from companies trying to, I mean, do something. You know, hey, this is a new women's sports league. Mm-hmm. Should we give them a couple hundred grand uh, and put our brand on the dashers? I mean, I would. You would think. I mean, that's that's where it's really. If these guys don't get support, you're going to see some hypocrisy out there. Everybody's trying to, you know, do the right thing and and play on the right side of the line. And here, these women finally get their stuff sorted, and they don't get any love. That'll be something. What have you heard, and what are your thoughts as we close this one out? Haven't heard much. Excited for the opportunity here. Um, Got to get that on the agenda. It's of, fun. Lot, we should go to a game. Yeah. yeah, yeah I we, only we went to one, but um, there's a lot of hockey here in Minnesota to watch. Yeah, pay no attention kidding. to go to. Uh, that's that's also changed the dynamic of this state. You know, Friday and Saturdays was go for hockey. Now yeah. I think that it really helped the other NCAA teams here in this state to come to fruition. You know, but we're in a different world now. Everybody's playing hockey Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, so there's just a lot of hockey. Um, but this is fantastic because we have not had yeah, this Yeah, it's all you can eat for sure. Yep. Well, hey, everybody, thanks for listening to episode one of the Let's Play Hockey podcast. I think this crew is going to roll us towards the state tournament, and then we'll figure out the format. Do we have guests? How long is it? What do we do? But I minimum on behalf of Brian with a Y and Brian with an I, I hope if you were driving your car around, um, going on a walk with your dog, that you enjoyed eavesdropping on this hockey conversation today. Um, Be good out there. Uh, Let's play hockey. The Let's Play Hockey podcast is also brought to you by the Let's Play Hockey Expo. This year's Expo March 8th and March 9th at the River Center in downtown St. Paul, right next door to the State High School Hockey Tournament. Come on down, check out the latest and greatest in the hockey industry, the Let's Play Hockey Expo, March 8th and 9th, downtown St. Paul, St. Paul River Center. It's time now. So let's play hockey!